YouTube. Welcome to my YouTube channel and I'm Anna Bella and today I am going to be reviewing The Craigslist Killer which is an hour and 27 minute film. Um, it's a thriller and it is about the Craigslist Killer, shockingly enough, um, Philip Markov who unfortunately killed himself in his cell which meant that his victims got no justice at all. His story is got similar Ted Bundy vibes in how it starts. Um, he was a successful medical student at college and he was studying to be a doctor. He gets a really, really good girlfriend. He comes from a divorced background um, and his money is a little bit tight. So because he's very, very clever, he engages in risky gambling behaviour, so he takes his new girlfriend to the casino, so there's a little bit of high rolling, makes some money, um, because he's intelligent enough to know when to stop um, at this point, and is successful in keeping and maintaining his wonderful girlfriend. They then go to get married and she becomes his fiance, everything looks rosy, and then weirdly enough his behaviour starts to change. Um, he is a very extremely clever boy. Um, he then sort of targets sex workers, but it's more sort of fear and intimidation at first, um, because his first um, times at sort of doing this because he just wants to sort of like tie them up and humiliate them and then when they won't comply that's when he starts accidentally killing them because he has a gun on him. It's all very 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 strange and things escalate quite quickly. Um, all while this is going on he's like living two lives. He's living his predatory life but also his respectable medical student life with his fiance. It's very strange. Um, type of events and almost looking at him you wouldn't think that he was a serial killer but I mean that's what they said about Ted Bundy he was just average looking person and people didn't believe that he was you know this child woman snatcher killer who was you know beating them with legs and fists and all sorts of terrible things um, very similar with Philip Markov the only thing is with Philip Markov is he was actually, his serial killing career was cut short because of the internet and Craigslist and we've got the tech now to be able to get these serial killers quite quickly. He was able to get away with it in the beginning because he was sort of driving these strange distances and going to motels and meeting people but weirdly enough Craigslist has led to 132 murders in America. They no longer have the erotic section, so you can't advertise, you know, your services there for massages or whatever it is people are doing. Um, but there's always been a bit of stranger danger meeting folk that you ha that you meet on the internet because you never know what you're going to find. And I think that this is very similar um, case to this. But weirdly enough, it became. very bizarre and it was interesting that um, Markov was actually um, caught by one of the husbands of one of the workers so she was upstairs preparing setting up her stall and her husband was downstairs in the bar very sensibly and Markov turned up started his routine and her husband kicked him out and he wasn't expecting that and that just shows how arrogant he actually was um, it's rated 15 for obvious reasons. I've said that it's an hour and 27 minutes. It's a very interesting um, story. His fiance, bless her, never suspected a thing. And when they found all the socks underneath the bed with, with his tokens from these, you know, from what he was doing in his other life, in his murder, in his serial killer life, she was completely thrown off because you'd have said this to anybody and they just wouldn't believe you. He was like, no, no he's really good he's a higher flyer medical student going to do this going to do that he would never do such a thing he's so polite nice boy and we see this pattern again and again and again but if you actually look at what he was doing before 
he turned to this. He targeted vulnerable women. He believed, um, like Jack the Ripper before him, he believed that sex workers wouldn't be believed and that they um, would have no validation whatsoever. But if you're advertising a business, and these women were, rightly or wrongly, we're not going to go down there, um, that route for money, then weirdly enough, you're actually protected. Strangely enough. Because you are providing a service, whether it's legal or not, who knows. Um, but the big thing is, is he, the client, was in a vulnerable position because the women sensibly used hotels and hotels have CCTV in them, particularly in the corridors, and that's how he was caught. And I think that that's always worth pointing out that yes, you can go to these services, but the location that these women chose had some rather interesting safety features built in, like the CCTV in the hotel lobby, in the corridors, obviously not in the rooms, but it's interesting these various things. Had these women not chose these locations, he wouldn't have been caught at all. And that's important. Um, and the police in this particular area were very, very, very hot on this because they were concerned because of the frequency and how violent things were becoming. Because it started off as just tying women up and intimidating them. And women were reporting this. And weirdly enough, you don't think that police will be involved, but actually they do have a vice squad for a reason, because the police are there to make sure that vice, which is drugs, gambling, alcohol, sex, working, make sure that this happens as it should do which is to allow the general public, the agency and freedom to choose these activities and partake of them in a supposedly safe way, but not completely crush it. When it becomes violent and when there is something that is deeply disturbing, that often happens, that's when the police will get involved, whether it be child trafficking, but it has to up the ante. It has to go beyond two consenting adults buying and selling sexual favours because that's when it becomes very, very dark and very, very damaging, even though consenting to buy and sell sex is ridiculous, but between two consenting adults, they can do whatever they like. When it becomes incredibly dangerous, and there are either sex traffic involved minors, or people are, you know, taken advantage of, the whole thing changes and that's when the police will actually step in and in fact they are far more informed about vice than the general population would expect them to be though sometimes and this is interesting because it's happened in the UK when vice takes a backward step so instead of using technology they go back to writing telephone numbers on the back of um, public toilet doors as they have as some gangs in the UK have recently with moving vulnerable foster children around for parties that's when the police had to backpedal because they were using old tech, not computers, because they knew that social media, they'd get picked up like that. And I think that it's important that the police have an understanding of both the old method, the pre-social media methods, and the social media methods. It's important. And the Craigslist killer is very interesting on many, many levels. Craigslist no longer advertises these erotic services at all. Um, because of this. Um, but it is interesting because this takes us back to the early days of the internet when things were sort of a bit, oh, I'm not quite sure, I'm not quite sure, and people still should be not quite sure. That's why having the blue tick of verification is so important on all these social media channels so that you know that you are speaking to that right person, whether it be a celebrity, a politician, or, you know, a shop because it's very easy. I could set up an Instagram account and pretend to be a florist that actually exists and there's nothing to stop me. And this is where the law really does need to catch up. Now, because you end up with a lot of scam celebrity accounts, I'm forever deleting them. It's ridiculous. Not to go off topic, but it is connected. How we conduct our social lives has been moved online, whereas before I would be able to phone somebody or you'd pass somebody's phone number you would find that you would remember 
far more phone numbers. Now people don't remember people's phone numbers because they say, oh, I can Facebook you and then we'll message and then I'll ask for your phone number through that. But how do you know that that Charles Johnson that you spoke to is the Charles Johnson that you know on Facebook? Because there'd be thousands of Charles Johnsons. You'd have to look at their profile before you clicked. So that's why whenever anybody gets a new profile, first thing you do before clicking friend is you check and you make sure, ah, who their friends are, what this. So it's, so you've almost become this sort of friendly self stalker, not because you want to, but because you actually want to protect your friendship circle, because it's whoever you invite into your Facebook friend list or whatever social media platform you're using, you are putting yourself and all the other people that you know are connected to you at risk by inviting that person in. So it's really important before you click friend that you check their profile and you say, right, where did they say they were from? Who are their parents? And other little details. Where's their cat Tabitha? And various other things so that you know you're clicking on the right Charles Johnson. I know people already know this, but it's so important. But this situation, yes, they were able to get it really quickly and stamp it out. But it's shocking because it's almost as if Philip himself knew that he'd completely screwed his life over. Hence why he suicided in jail. Because he wrote his um, fiance's name in blood next to his dead body, which is horrific. Absolutely horrific because I actually count his fiance as one of his victims because she didn't know. And in fact, when the allegations were coming out, she still believed that he was innocent. And her family were like, are you sure? Because it's looking like he possibly could have done. And all of the other people in Philip's life, whether they were in the hospital or whether they weren't, were like, mm, are you sure? Are you sure? Because they couldn't believe it. But this is the power of the white male in America who happens to be training to be a doctor. It is quite shocking. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this review. Please like, comment and subscribe. And I hope that you are staying safe wherever you are. Don't forget to click the notification bell and thanks for the support. Bye and stay safe online.